good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. It's episode number 931, 931. And the topic today is about change. Yes, that interesting, challenging, unusual, fun type thing, depending on where you sit with this. Let's talk about if you're really ready for change, if you want to make change, and are you rather comfortable not changing? So I'm just going to cover the gamut of all sorts of things, especially because we've got a new decade coming up and everything else. But before I jump in too much, let me start with who I am and get you on board so you can understand where we're going to go. So, hi, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my broadcast. Um, I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. Gives you lots of good insight and stuff like that. Probably too late to get it for Christmas, but I do recommend getting it for the new year, so it's worth having. Um, I will put a link in the comments at the back end so you can actually get a copy yourself. Speaking of which, this is a Facebook Live I do I've actually been doing now for three years, just over three years in fact, called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. So today we're at episode number 931, and there will be comments in, there will be links in the comments at the end, so my book will be in there for one because I've already mentioned it. A couple other things are brewing, and I'll tell you about those in a moment. So today we're talking about change, and the opportunities for change, the challenges, the things you go through for change, because some people are like, oh yeah, I want to have everything I want. But there's a resistance to that because they're stuck with what they're comfortable with. And this, I'm already jumping the deeper. Let me start with the, let me start the higher end. <laughs> I'm already diving into the answers. Like, no, let me start with more of the problems. You know what I'm talking about and see if you can relate. There are many people I know. Thank you for the love. Hi, Anna. Nice to see you. Um, there are plenty of people I know who would rather be static and maintaining the status quo than ever changing because they're afraid of what they would lose. And this is one of the motivators a lot of people have for staying where they are in a job, in a relationship, in a particular location, because it's more comfortable to stay where they are and be uncomfortable, if that makes any sense, rather than risk it all and go somewhere else. So the idea of change for a lot of people is this wonderful theory out there somewhere in the distance, not somewhere in life. And that's unfortunate, because I'm very aware, <laughs> and I said this yesterday, I think I about this yesterday, that I've had a lot of changes in my life over the last few decades. Um, with living in four different countries and having the different careers and everything else. And I've already talked about that before. But what I've become very aware of and very clear about is that change is actually a friend of mine. I would say that. Things that change, I've become, perhaps the best way of describing it is I've become nimble on my feet. And it's not necessarily it's like I'm proud about saying I'm special, just that I've been through enough lessons, enough, tr enough opportunities, and enough challenges that being able to change and adapt to something different and new has generally been something I've been okay with. Now, I'm not saying 100% of that, but better than others, I know, because I know certain people, I'm not going to name names, who will stay in the same job for 20 years and never try risking anything else that's different, even though their heart might be yearning for something different. They might be desiring and dreaming of some new life, but they'd rather stay comfortable in the same job they were in for the last 25 years, 30 years. And so they're almost like asking for things to change without them changing to do it. Because this is one of the things, by the way, one of the big principles. If you want life to change, you have to change to match it too. It's almost impossible, virtually impossible, I would say, based on my own research <laughs> and experience, that if I want things to change out there, it won't happen if I don't change something inside of me. It's a mirror system, basically. It's a, ma it's a, it's a, it's a match two type thing, where basically, if you want things to change out there, you've got to change inside. That can include frame things like relationships. And since that's my speciality, one of my specialities, let me talk about that. I know people who stay in relationships out of fear of being alone. As in, to be alone would be so uncomfortable they'd rather stay in a relationship that doesn't work. Uh, and I'm I'm it it, it, <laughs> it upsets me to say it that way. I've seen enough people who live through relationships that suffer in relationships because they would rather be in that comfort of discomfort versus being free and being in the unknown. I was talking yesterday about the difference between, was it yesterday before, about the fear of people have of leaving the comfort zone because they fear about being uncomfortable. And I said, no, for me, the understanding is the comfort zone is where it's easy, safe, and minimal. Outside of that is what I call the magic zone because anything can happen out there. So why not see it as magic versus discomfort? So the idea of change for me is something that is approachable, acceptable, acceptable and kind of fun because it, it means you don't get bored, first of all. <laughs> it 
And if you are feeling like you're getting bored in life, this might be a good clue to recognize that maybe you're not willing to change yet. Or maybe you're comfortable staying where you are rather than actually making the shift and changing to get where you really want to go. I've done some things in my life that I'm not necessarily proud of or happy about because I was basically changing with an idea of where I was going to go without knowing where I was going to happen. And so I'm not saying it's the perfect thing to do, to leap into the new, into the unknown and hoping, was it the um, faith is, there's a quote about, something like faith is, is leaping off the cliff and knowing your wings will be added as you, as you, as you go down type thing. I, I butchered, I think, three quotes into that one. So there's not the actual quote, but it's something like that about sometimes blind faith um, absolute trust in the universe without having a clue why or how and then going ahead and doing something can sometimes be the most um, exciting and scary sometimes successful and sometimes not successful experience so I just want to be clear I'm not saying you should rush out now and do the most risky thing you could ever do just to have the experience of change I know some people who are basically adrenaline junkies that's what they do is they're always about pushing the envelope pushing the limits to feel something because they don't feel anything when they're not they're not in their um, at rest, so to speak. That's a whole other conversation. I could, t- I do not, could not talk about that one, about not being able to find home where you are. Because part of this thing about changing and shifting is to recognize that wherever you go, to quote Bakaru Banzai, uh, you have to remember, wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> That's a, there's a quote from the movie Bakaru Banzai, I remember from many, many years ago. But the, thing, the idea being is that wherever you go, you take yourself with you. So wherever you go, you may be in a change externally, but in turn, it's still you going with you. So you actually have some, I would say, comfort and peace in knowing that you're with yourself along the way, so to speak. And that's the thing is that people look at change as being something so alien, so foreign, so different, that they don't know how to get there. They're in such a place of dis- um, discomfort, probably the way to put it. The idea of change is it's just too high a bar to reach and they'd rather stay safe again. Rather stay uncomfortable where it's familiar. That's, that's the word. Actually, better yeah, say that way. Let me rewind it for a second. It's better to be in a place that's familiar yet uncomfortable than go somewhere else where you might have a different experience that's not so familiar, but you might end up being more comfortable. And you get how backwards that is? I see people do that in relationships, as I mentioned earlier. I know so people, did I finish that? Well, I'll go back to that one. But also know that people do that in their, in their jobs and careers. Working in a job because they're afraid of being unemployed and as a friend of mine said one of her skill sets is she's unemployable I'm getting close to that myself I'm so clear that my work has to be leadership and being able to help other people that to work for somebody else to do that doesn't work for me and that's something I've learned now going back to my earliest careers I had no clue I could even risk doing that yes even though I did leaving four countries inside well from um, just thinking from age 20 uh, 19 so f- five years just what is a five year span from 1924, lived in four different countries. But I still had jobs. So I wasn't feeling that scared, even though I was in, in different languages. So maybe I could sort of say I'm the poster child that changes okay. <laughs> I'm kind of going to say that. But reality is that relationships are not serving you if they're familiar, but they're not comfortable. If you're not enjoying it, you're not growing, you're not living in a place that is, is changing you for the better. I'm not a big fan of relationships that don't do that. I'm, in fact, I'm not a big fan of, I'm, I'm not a supporter of people choosing safety, settling, comfortable relationships that don't have fun, joy, expansion, growth, and evolution in them. I'm kind of adamant about that. <laughs> so in my work and my clients, a lot of times what I'm helping them do is see clearly what it is they want, who they really are. So when they're looking for where they want to go, it takes them to another level, another, another um, expansion to a place where they want to thrive. And that's one of my strengths and my skills with my clients is to, is to basically hold their hands with their journey because that journey into that unknown can feel a bit scary and it's just somebody with you who can support you that's why it's good to be in relationships with people either familiar either either romantic or business or any other relationship where you feel you can trust the partner so when you go into the unknown you've got something safe to be with because the unknown can be amazingly good and amazingly wonderful at the same time it's nice to have something you can trust next to you a partner a coach a business partner whatever that is so I didn't necessarily do it that way. I did a lot of stuff solo because that's just the way I'm wired. But definitely with somebody you can trust with you can make it even better. And I do know that from experience. So um, there was something else I wanted to say on that. So, oh yeah, change in relationship. The thing about relationships, and I've talked about this one before because it's in my book. Again, the link will be in the comments for my book at the end. 
it talks about how the relationships that are, are healthy, let's put it, I'm putting that framing, so healthy romantic relationships, are predicated on the idea of having a sense of tension in the relationship, meaning that it's not a relationship where everything just lets go and it's all done. A healthy relationship is not one where you settle down. Much of people say you should get married and settle down. No, you should lift up, not settle down. So that's a, that's a wordy thing I know, but here's the thing. People choose relationships oftentimes where they can be comfortable and have a piece when it's like when they enter the relationship, they enter that level and it never goes anywhere up from there. It just stays where it is or goes down from there. I've done it myself, so I know what it feels like. And I'm sure if you're watching this, you may have had the same experience because frankly, it is something that um, is commonplace. It's part of the codependent racket I've talked about many times before, so I'm not going to get into that one now. But codependency is something that really does get in the way of relationships. And part of that, part of that thing that makes relationships work is growing. And if you're in a growing relationship, codependency doesn't really happen as easily. So one way to remove codependency from a relationship is to be in one where you, where you and your partner are continually growing and up-leveling and becoming better people. That's again, once I, that, I, talk about that, I talk about that in my book as rubber band relationships. And if I did, I talk about that about a month ago, three or four weeks ago, about the rubber band experience in relationships. And the idea being is that if you don't have growth happening, it's like if, as some teachers talk about, if you're not growing, you're dying. I think basically what I'd say is if you're not growing, you're stagnating. And if you're in a relationship that isn't going anywhere, it's kind of stagnating. So be in a relationship that is healthy, be in a relationship that is growing, or be willing to walk away from it. Now, I'm not saying walk away from a 20 year marriage with three kids unless you really know what you're doing, because I'm not here to say you should walk away no matter what. What I'm saying is that if you can change the paradigm of your relationship to where you're being supported and you can thrive and you can grow, then great. But if your relationship is dragging you down, you've got to reconsider your options. So really get clear about what it is you really want, how you want to take care of yourself, and then how you can take care of others in those, those relationships with other people involved, just to be clear about that one. But the same thing is about career and vocation. I've had some really, as I said, several careers. I mean, I think the last camp was eight different careers over the last so many years. I'm not going to give you exact numbers. But the thing is that I've experienced that in those careers, everything was always about the next level, the next growth, the next step. And I've always found myself in a much better place. So I'm very grateful about that. Now, you may be in a place where you've been in a job for six months and you're ready to change. Depends on if it's a good idea or not. If you've been, a, if you've been in a career for 30, 40 years and your feeling is, is sucking your soul dry, you're not getting anything juice out of it, you may want to consider other options to introduce or practice some other skills to see what else you may want to branch into later on. Finding what works for you is important in er every area, relationship, career, health, vocation, everything. So it's important that you know what that is for you. And that's part of why, one reason why I'm sort of talking about these things all the time in my talks. It's also why I've been talking for the last four or five days and, I'm def and I finally put the web page up today so you can go check it out. I'll put the link in the comments. Um, a new course that I'm offering in January called, called Balance, it's called BFF, Balance, Freedom and Flow. And it's a, it's a passion project of mine because I wanted to help people really understand how embracing change in a good way, embracing themselves so they really know who they are and they find their resource inside by being in balance with themselves, by having freedom to do whatever they want and then being flow in life. I'm thinking my hand signal is kind of funny. Is, is a really powerful place to be. So I'll put a link in the comments for, my, for the new course because basically it's a, I've got a video on there and some other stuff in there as well and I also basically put um, three different levels of how you can register earlier the better so you can get into the course so anyway read about that on the, on the web page the link will be in the comments but I am here to really make clear to you that this is a good time to think about what change you want to make we are getting closer to the end of the year which means the new decade is starting in January I know I'm using, everyone's using the term because basically we're 2019 2020 actually technically <laughs> technically 2020 is the end of the decade 2021 is the beginning of the next decade however Everyone's talking about 2020 being the new decade because it's a new digit. In math, it works out the other way, just to be clear. <laughs> Not going to make it a mess up. But here's the thing. We're starting a new paradigm. And if it is a new year you want to start, whereas a new year, a new decade, why not start it the right way with support, with guidance, and with understanding where you want to go, with absolute, absolute um, clarity of what your vision direction is for the next year. You can do, do New Year's resolutions on January 1st, or you can go deeper and have some real but real effective, real tangible, and real successful results. That's why I've launched the BFF program. And again, link up in the comments, you can check it out. Um, this time of year is always an interesting time because we are getting close to Christmas. That's only, what, four or five days away. 
um, actually six days a week, just to get my math right. Yes, right. So it can be a time that can be very challenging around family or around being alone. I know for a lot of people, being Christmas is not the most happy time of year. So I'm going to recommend one check out my BFF because that's going to help you next year anyway. But in the meantime, because that doesn't start till January 7th, I am adamant about you learning to love yourself. A reminder always is to take care of yourself on all different levels. I talk about my sign off and everything about taking care of yourself. Well, one of the best ways you can take care of yourself is to love yourself. So I'm going to put a link in the comments for my self love meditation because that guided meditation with two audio tracks and the written guidebook will change your life in 30 days. It will transform your relationship with yourself, which in, in, um, in effect, that's the right word, in turn, that's a better thing, in turn will change every relationship around you. When you love yourself fully, I mentioned earlier about codependency, when you love yourself fully, the need for codependency evaporates. When you love yourself fully, you don't feel like other people, the need from other people to get something from them, but you feel okay, you feel okay in yourself. Self-love is a powerful tool, as is my, my, my uh, Balance, Freedom and Flow program next year. It all fits together. There's also going to be some surprises and gifts in that course. That if you sign up now, you'll get access to those. So um, again, link them in the comments. There'll be three links to my book, the BFF course, and my self-love meditation will be in the comments. Um, what else? What else? If you need help, if you have any comments about this, if this has been brought up anything for you, please let me know in the comments as well. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to find out where you can find my other broadcasts, here's where you find the replays. This, in case you hadn't seen me before, is my daily Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page, usually around 5 o'clock, usually around 15, 20 minutes. Um, you can join me live at facebook.com slash Barry Selby. If you want to watch the replays, you can go to my business page on, on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, where you find most of the replays, actually some of them, they're all there. Facebook doesn't save everything. It seems to hide a bunch. So that being the case, you can, you can like my page, please, barryselby.author. But also you can go to my YouTube channel and watch all of them there because I made sure I got backups. So my YouTube channel is youtube.com, youtube.com slash user slash barryselby. Subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine where every single one of my broadcasts, including this one, shortly, are listed from newest to oldest. You can scan through the titles, finding keywords, titles that speak to you, and watch whichever one you want. Um, I think that's about it. I've given you some th food for thought, give you some next steps, and some place to go for resource. And uh, as I said earlier, I'm always about telling you this. So once again, and thank you for watching. Thanks for being with me. Um, take care of yourself. That's the bottom line for all my work. So I'm ready to do that now, and I'll see you again tomorrow. And uh, take what I said to heart. I'll see you again soon. Bye.